Right now, Chris Ferguson is uh, being assisted with his launch and entry suit. He's our STS-135 mission com commander. He's making his third space shuttle flight. He's logged more than 28 days in space, and he served as the spacecraft communicator, or the CAPCOM, on four space shuttle missions. He was the pilot on STS-115 and the commander on SAS-126. And this looks like uh, Doug Hurley. Yes, it'd be Doug Hurley uh, going in Marine. Uh, Colonel, he is uh, flying as a pilot on this flight. This is his second flight. Flew a few years ago on 127. Uh, and he's being helped there. You can see the guys out in the white room. They get everybody ready to go. Number four there is Renee Arians. He's another longtime member. And by the way, all the guys that we've talked about so far are USA employees. Doug has gotten in from the mid-deck, and you kind of have to go in through the mid-deck through the hatch, and in the mid-deck you kind of take a right, about a 90-degree right. You have to go through the ladder access, which normally when you're vertical you'd be climbing the ladder. In this case you're going right, and then you actually crawl on the aft panels, and you can see that Randy's actually standing on the aft panels there as he gets folks ready to get in, in the vehicle. So we've got uh, things down there that protect the aft panels, a uh, certain place where you can stand. Like if you notice, for instance, Randy's not standing on the switches. We can't stand there. And this is Sandy Magnus. She's our mission specialist number one. So when she gets in, I think um, she's going to be on the flight deck in the aft right seat. Now this is Rex Waldheim. He's, he's mission specialist number two, but he's also the flight engineer. We do the first comm check with the visor open, so it's just a check of the communication system. After that, uh, we'll go ahead and close the visor and make sure the communications work with the visor down, that nothing gets upset by there. There's no comm cable that's stuck in the visor or anything like that. So we do a comm check with NTD and then with Houston. Chris and Renee have closed the hatch at this time. And we're standing by to go into the hold at T minus 20 minutes and 15 seconds. This will be a 10 minute built in hold. Attention all personnel, countdown clocks at T minus 20 minutes and holding. Duration of that hold will be. 10. And we are now at T minus 20 minutes and holding. This is a 10 minute built in hold. Close out crew still wrapping up in the um, white room.
Okay, so you're saying that you are completely closed out and you're ready to leave the uh, white room? Yes, ma'am. Well, I can remember um, when, when you were preparing for that launch commentary for STS-1, I, I can remember seeing you in your office working on that. I mean, there were, there were papers all around your computer in your working way. I mean, there, just, there was so much going in to prepare for that. And um, then later, I can remember when you were actually going over the firing room to actually do the commentary, and there was a humongous notebook. This is the uh, white room clue to your quick uh, sayonara here. We did want to catch that. DSS OTC. Good. You can start your second HU pump step ten thirty. And attention console operators, this continue all LDB commands and reads during pass ops transition. ECL OTC? ECL. How are we doing on cab and vent? I was just about to give you nine forty seven. Okay. So in for 9.48 is 14.75. CDR, report. OTC PLT, three good APUs. Copy, three good APUs. Next milestone is a check of the orbiter's flight controls. TLS is going for perch sequence four. And there will be a steering check of Atlantis's three main engines. find now that the main engines are in their start position. TLS is code for ET LO2 pressurization. Starting now the 
retraction of the gaseous oxygen vent arm, the vent hood. TLT OTC, clear caution warning memory, verify no unexpected errors. Fuel cells going to internal. External tank camera being activated at this time. OTC, TLT, no unexpected errors. Copy that. Flight crew, OTC, close and lock your visors and initiate O2 flow. T minus two minutes. For ET LH2 Solid rocket booster camera is being activated. T minus. Now, the suppression water system is being armed. T-minus one minute. Put oxygen and liquid hydrogen fill in drain valves are closed. T minus 40 seconds, handing off to Atlantis' computers at T minus 31. T minus 35, 33. Clock will hold at T minus 31 seconds due to a failure. Mark. T minus. So for auto sequence, start. Hand off to Atlantis' computers has occurred. Solid rocket booster nozzle steering check and work. 20. Firing chain is armed. 15. Go for main engine start. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. All three engines up and burning. 2, 1, 0, and liftoff. The final liftoff of Atlantis on the shoulders of the space shuttle. America will continue the dream. Roger roll, Atlantis. Houston now controlling the flight of Atlantis. The space shuttle spreads its wings one final time for the start of a sentimental journey into history. 24 seconds into the flight, roll program complete. Atlantis now heads down, wings level on the proper alignment for its eight and a half minute ride to orbit. Four and a half million pounds of hardware and humans taking aim on the International Space Station. 40 seconds into the flight, the three liquid fuel main engines throttling back to 72% of rated performance in the bucket, reducing stress on the shuttle as it goes transonic for the final time. Engines now revving up, standing by for the throttle up call. Call from Capcom Barry Wilmore, a transducer, instrumentation only, no action required. Atlantis now 15 miles in altitude, already 16 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, one minute 40 seconds into the flight. Atlantis flexing its muscles one final time. Atlantis traveling almost 2,600 miles an hour, 21 miles in altitude, 24 miles downrange. Standing by for solid rocket booster separation.
Booster officer confirms staging a good solid rocket booster separation. Guidance now converging. The main engine steering the shuttle on a pinpoint path to its preliminary orbit. Two minutes, 20 seconds into the flight. Atlantis already traveling 3,200 miles an hour, 35 miles in altitude, 50 miles downrange. The propulsion officer reports the orbital maneuvering system engines have ignited. Atlantis kicking on its afterburners for 1 minute 23 seconds for the final phase of powered flight. Atlantis, two engine towel. Eight minutes, 15 seconds into the flight, standing by for main engine cutoff. That'll be followed a few seconds later by the separation of the external fuel tank. Booster officer confirms main engine cutoff. For the last time, the space shuttle's main engines have fallen silent as the shuttle slips into the final chapter of a storied 30-year adventure. Now standing by for external tank separation. Atlantis off the tank. Commander Chris Ferguson will be maneuvering Atlantis now into an orientation to enable Sandy Magnus to capture digital still imagery of the external fuel tank as it drifts away. So, ohms 1 is not required. Your preliminary ohms 2 TIG, 37 minutes. 37 minutes, uh, no ohms one required, thanks. This is Mission Control Houston, Atlantis safely in its preliminary orbit. Following a flawless launch from the Kennedy Space Center, albeit about two and a half minutes late at uh, 10.29 a.m. Central Time. The launch slightly delayed uh, while engineers at the Kennedy Space Center confirmed uh, the complete retraction of the gaseous vent arm at the launch pad. Commander Chris Ferguson is currently orienting uh, Atlantis into the proper uh, attitude uh, to enable Sandy Magnus to capture digital still imagery of the external fuel tank as it drifts away for the final time. Atlantis currently in an orbit of 140 by 36 statute miles. That's the preliminary orbit uh, that will be increased in altitude at its apogee through the firing of the orbital maneuvering system engines 26 minutes from now.